Welcome back. Just a quick video today on Evergrande, the struggling Chinese property developer. There's a ton of news right now asking if the collapse of Evergrande will be China's Lehman Brothers moment. So let's discuss. Well, Evergrande is a huge company. It's China's second largest property company and the world's most indebted property developer. They have liabilities of over $310 billion, so it's a big deal. In 2018, when China's central bank put together a list of companies that might pose systemic risk to the nation's financial system, Evergrande was near the top of that list. The stock is down around 80% year to date and the company appears to be insolvent. Now what might surprise you is that the company has never reported a loss and they've had current assets greater than current liabilities in every accounting period in the company's history. So what's going on? Well, investors became worried about Evergrande around this time last year when a leaked letter from the company showed that they had begged the government for support to approve a now-dropped backdoor listing plan. The company claims that this letter was a forgery. The leaked letter said that the company's liabilities involved more than 128 banks and over 121 non-banking institutions. They admitted this Tuesday that they're under tremendous pressure and may not be able to meet their debt obligations. For a borrower of that size, late payments on these debts could trigger cross defaults. As many financial institutions have exposure to Evergrande via either direct loans or through indirect holdings through different financial instruments. The idea is that a large financial institution could well be relying on receiving a payment from Evergrande to make a payment of its own on its debts. Now, it's not just the banks that might have problems. Evergrande relies heavily on customers paying for apartments before the projects are completed in order to finance construction. Hundreds of thousands of Chinese people have put down deposits on homes that might never be built. Bloomberg reports that the company has taken down payments on approximately one and a half million properties. Evergrande will also owe a lot of money to suppliers too who could go bankrupt if they're not paid. Additionally, Evergrande has a wealth management affiliate that offers financial products to Chinese investors backed by the company's credit, and they're renegotiating these loans right now. Evergrande is also a major employer in China. Its collapse would have a severe impact on the job market. The company has 200,000 employees and it hires 3.8 million people every year for project developments. These problems obviously don't come at a good time for China investors, coinciding with the Chinese government's regulatory drive against big tech, the for-profit education industry, the real estate industry and other sectors. Over the last few days, angry protesters have been gathering outside the company's headquarters, demanding information. Investors are growing increasingly nervous that if Evergrande were to collapse, there could be a domino effect causing other property developers to fail, creating systemic risks for the banking system of the world's second largest economy. Now, real estate is one of the major engines of China's growth. It's responsible for 29% of economic output, and so a bankruptcy of this size would have major repercussions. Many analysts are arguing that there's no way that Beijing would allow such an important company to go under, uh, basically just because it would undermine the regime's stability. So what went wrong? Well, the company is burdened by a mountain of liabilities of more than $310 billion after years of borrowing to fund rapid growth. They stepped up acquisitions in recent years, taking advantage of a real estate frenzy. In August of last year, the Chinese government introduced new measures to monitor and control the debt level of major property developers. This crackdown forced Evergrande to offload properties at increasingly steep discounts, reducing prices by up to 25% in order to deleverage. 
One of the biggest problems for Evergrande, which is a general problem in China, is that the reason the company is struggling, having never reported a loss, is that bad investments in China are never really written down. If a company like Evergrande never acknowledges losses, they just show up on the balance sheet as inventory. And Evergrande has a lot of inventory on its balance sheet. Inventory that can't be liquidated to pay off debts because there's very little of value left to sell. At this point, everything that can be sold either has been sold or it's been pledged against specific debts. Now, early on when the company was growing, a lot of this shortfall could be filled with increased borrowing, but eventually you can't do that anymore. Their inventory includes undeveloped land, work in progress construction, and completed inventory. Analysts are claiming that the company may have capitalized $220 billion of losses as current assets. You then have to worry about the state of other property developers in China too. Evergrande was downgraded by two credit rating agencies last week, and its Hong Kong listed shares have collapsed by more than 80% this year. On Monday, the Shanghai Stock Exchange paused trading in their 2023 bond after it fell more than 30%. So what's the company doing to save itself? Well, on Tuesday, Evergrande issued another statement to the Hong Kong Stock Exchange, saying it had hired financial advisors to explore all feasible solutions to ease its cash crunch. The statement warned that there was no guarantee that the property firm would meet its financial obligations. The firm blamed ongoing negative media reports for damaging sales in the crucial September period. I guess if you can't blame short sellers, you can always blame the media. Evergrande is trying to convince its wealth management customers to accept properties at steep discounts instead of cash repayments. Many have rejected this offer, which requires them to buy in their home provinces and was subject to approval from local authorities. The company's founder has appeared in social media posts showing senior executives signing guarantees that they'll complete ongoing projects. The company was working on 778 developments in more than 200 cities across China as of the end of June. Now, should the company fail in a disorderly manner, there's severe risk of contagion. And so many are asking if the government will just intervene and how might they do that. The Chinese government won't want to be seen to bail out the company, but they may want to intervene just to maintain stability in the country. There are many financial institutions involved, the majority of which are state-owned, so the government could intervene through those channels without appearing to directly intervene. You might see a big rescue program where the company debt gets exchanged for equity or something like that. The company's founder was listed by Forbes as the third wealthiest man in China last year. He may soon be due a place on my list of billionaires who lost everything. And if you haven't yet seen that video, here's a link. See you later. Bye.